Light Above, a short story written and narrated by Robert Fairhead from the Tall and True Writer's Website. I open my eyes, blink, and try to focus on the bright lights set into the white ceiling flying past overhead. I hear beeps and muffled voices. It feels like I'm strapped to a camp stretcher, but it's moving. I'm on a hospital gurney. What happened? I want to ask, but there's a tube down my throat and I can't talk. I've stopped moving. I'm in a room with more beeping and a light in the centre of the ceiling. A masked face shines a torch into my eyes. I blink. The voices are clearer. He's back, the masked voice says. It's a miracle, someone adds. What happened? I want to ask again, but I still can't speak or move my head. I can only blink. I recall a fog light dream. It was early morning and I was on my bike, freewheeling downhill, fast. A car sped past me, close, too close. The bike wobbled and the dream ended. There's activity in my peripheral vision, but the voices are muffled again and the beeps fainter. I struggle to focus on the light above me, but just want to close my eyes. I succumb and everything goes dark and quiet. You're back, an ethereal voice beside me says. I turn, but there's no one there. Sorry, where are you, I ask. Here, with you, the voice responds. Here? Where's here, I ask. Fear flooding through me as I look from left to right and see nothing but a black void. Relax, the voice reassures me. We're in the afterlife. The afterlife? I flail about and try to grab the body of the voice and shake some sense into it, but my hands grasp nothing. Then it dawns on me, there isn't a body, and I have no hands. I plunge into full-fledged panic and scream. Ah! 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 Now, now, the voice says calmly, I know the afterlife's a shock at first, but you'll have plenty of time to get used to it. After all, we're here for eternity. No! I don't have time for eternity, I protest. I've got sales reports due this week. My wife and I have a dinner date. And my son's birthday party is next weekend. I have plans. Life seldom works out as planned, the voice counsels. I learned that lesson when the airline delayed my flight. Had we departed as scheduled, we would have missed the storm. And I wouldn't be here with you. No, I don't have time for this, I repeat. And then something sparks in my memory. Hang on. You said, you're back. Have I been here before? Yes. Briefly, the voice confirms. The doctor's resuscitated you. That's it, I say, hope replacing my fear and panic. The doctors can bring me back to life again. I admire your spirit. Pardon the pun, the voice chuckles. (laughs) But once is a miracle, twice is. I hear beeping again. I open my eyes, blink, and focus on the light in the white ceiling above me. Hi, I'm Robert Fairhead from Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writer's Website. I wrote The Light Above for the March 2024 Furious Fiction, the Australian Writer Centre's 500-word flash fiction challenge. The brief for March was that each story had to include a character who revisits something, the same colour in its first and last sentence, and the words camp, fast and spark. Longer words retaining the original spelling were permissible. When I started writing the story, I planned to have my character revisit a place, like their hometown, after a long absence. But I've drawn from the deep well of this autofiction for several other stories. I left my hometown, Perth, Western Australia, in 1983, when I was 21, over 40 years ago. Instead, I switched on the bright white light of a near-death experience, and the place became the afterlife, or life, depending on how you read the story. I didn't make the Writers' Centre's showcase or long list for March, which left me feeling a little low. But fellow Furious Fiction writer Judd Exley, with whom I shared The Light Above, lifted my spirits, pardon the pun, with his enthusiastic feedback. Oh man, oh man, did I love that story. That was brilliant, utterly brilliant. So, I picked myself up, revisited the story, rephrased a few passages, tweaked a word here and there, and shared it on Tall and True, my 42nd official and unofficial Furious Fiction since April 2020. 
As I wrote in a 2020 blog post on Tall and True about the challenge, by its name and nature, Furious Fiction doesn't afford writers time to reflect on their writing. Consequently, the story I've shared on Tall and True differs from the one I submitted to the Writers' Centre. But the light above respects the criteria and word count rules, and the judges would still recognise it, and hopefully agree, that it's a better story for my reflection and edits. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode. You can read the light above and my selected short stories, blog posts and other writings at tallandtrue.com. You can also buy my short story and microfiction collections from the Amazon Kindle, Apple Books and Kobo online bookstores. Links are available in the show notes. The next episode of Tall and True Short Reads will be released shortly. In the meantime, please check your feed or the podcast website tallandtrueshortreads.com for earlier episodes from all four seasons. And follow or subscribe to the podcast and rate and review it via your favourite podcasting app. Doing so helps share my storytelling. You can support the podcast financially by making a small one-off or regular donation via the ACAR supporter page. You'll find a link in the show notes. Finally, please share this episode with family and friends and spread the word about Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writers website.